It never stops. It never stops. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. It just Okay. All right. All right. Let me start over. <clears throat> Hello, I'm the nostalgia card guy. Remember it's... All right. This movie is not only bad. It is annoying. Ungodly annoying. Just when you think it needs to take a break from being annoying, <laughs> that's when it gets even more annoying! <sighs> okay, let's get the title out of the way The Magic Voyage. Wait till you hear this. This is a children's story about Christopher Columbus as told by German filmmakers. Yeah, that's right, German filmmakers. That's the equivalent of American filmmakers making a children's film about Russian history. And look how fucking well that turned out! Shit, we can't even get our own history right! So what makes you think the Germans have a shot? But this goes beyond just magical powers, a talking bat or a talking tree. No, no, this story goes right off the deep end of the flat friggin' earth. But what makes this film especially horrendous? Oh, you'll see in a moment. Let's dive right into The Magic Voyage! So as the credits roll, we see that the film is too cheap to get opening animation, so they just throw their storyboards at us. We see the narrator starts to talk about the story we're about to see, and... Yeah, tell me if the voice sounds familiar. A long time ago, people thought the world was flat. And if you sailed uncharted waters, you just might fall over the edge into space. That's right, it's our very own Mickey Rooney. Hi. Former biggest star in the world. Hi. Started with Elizabeth Taylor, the other former biggest star in the world. Narrator of Care Bears. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch a black and white movie yeah. sometime. Actually, it is eerie how exactly the same his performance is from both these kids' movies. Listen. But in 1492, there appeared an Italian navigator, a man with a revolutionary idea. He thought that the world was square, and his name was the Care Bears. Ooh, that smile. As long as I don't have to see him, I'm okay. Here we go! Woo. We then see our main hero of the movie. Yeah, I bet you thought it was going to be Christopher Columbus, didn't you? He does only take up two-thirds of the fucking poster. But nope, it's a little woodworm named Pico, played by not former biggest star in the world, Corey Feldman. I used to be a bookworm. I sat up on the shelf. I read about exotic... Okay, I'll say ya. The singer can't sing, the songwriter can't write, and this has nothing to do with Christopher Columbus. So skip it, skip it. But he does eventually come across Christopher Columbus, voiced by, oh, Dom. Dom! Why did you have to pick so many bad movies? Do you think I like continually making fun of you? You seemed like a nice guy. I liked you. You were really cool, but... Yeah, it's the story of America told by Germans! You should know better, Dom. You should know better! But on the bright side, he is Italian, so he can probably do an authentic Italian accent. But for Napoli, my map is just so stinky. Or maybe he'll be as authentic as Mario. Hey, at least they're aiming for the popular stereotypes. Hey, I think I'd like to show you something. Oh, I good. think you're gonna like it a lot, too. It's a me, Christopher Columbus. It's 1492, and the world is still a flat. Maybe it's not so important. Not so important? Are you kidding? Excuse hey. me. Hey! Mm. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Maybe Whoa. the world is she's a. She's around? Of course it's around, Blockhead. What do you think? <laughs> uh, no disrespect to insects, but how the fuck does a woodworm know the world is round? I mean, seriously, where did that come from? Are woodworms just the smartest creatures on the planet? I'm at the thinking the world is flat. No, it's not. It's round. Well, I'm at the thinking that Christianity is the true religion. No, it isn't. It's Rastafarian. Oh, no. Yes. Well, I'm at the thinking that we're totally alone in space. No, we're not. There's the Blardonians. Once the Blardonian government gets enough money to fund their space program, they'll come to Earth and enslave us all. Oh, wow. Well, I'm at the thinking this movie's gonna be a big hit. Have a drink. So, have you noticed the main problem with this movie? I mean, outside of the horrible characters, voice acting, story, and animation? It's a little hard to get through in edited clips, but let's see if you can figure it out in this clip. Excuse me. Do you mind? 
I suppose you're wondering what I got here. You know, I couldn't really care less. No? How about this one? My brand new theory, which will make you great to be on your wildest dreams. That's so. Oh, yes. And what makes you think I'm not already great beyond my wildest dreams? No, no. You Still not getting it? Let's try one more. Uh-uh. Are you going oh. away? But you only just got I, here. I, oh, uh, no. Yes, yes, I found a new oh. route to the oh. Oh. It never shuts up. There is always talking, always loud music, always something knocking in your ears. The whole movie is like this. There is never a silent moment where the film can just breathe or take a break. It is nothing but noise. What a lovely <laughs> Noise. <laughs> There's one thing I can't stand, it's all the noise. Noise, noise, noise! It's like it's afraid if it stops being loud and bouncy, it's going to lose the children's attention. And that's not a good thing. Children need slow moments, they need pauses. It teaches them patience and the appreciation of atmosphere. This... This is just waving your keys in front of their dumb little faces for an hour and a half! Thank you, Arnold. So, let's try to continue this review despite all the nice, 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 nice. Shut up! Shut up! Thank you. He goes to the king and queen to tell them his idea. Oh, I'm sorry, the woodworm's idea. And they seem to be on board with it. Mostly because the queen has the hot for Columbus. Interesting interpretation. Oh, who's Hello? this? No one, dear. Just another genius. What? You know? I don't believe you. He's much, much too, too handsome. handsome. Oh, and apparently he's a mind reader too, because he knew exactly what she was gonna say there. What a disgusting display. But don't let it get to you, sire. By the way, you see this guy in the back here who looks like a mix between Fagin and Jafar? Yes. The shady fella always telling the king not to trust Columbus? Yeah. He never shows up again. Not once in the rest of the movie. He was, uh, oh, how do you say, Tortoise of the animation. Whoa! Hey, these are pretty cool. So Pico goes into one of the other rooms and finds a firefly named Marilyn. Princess of the Moon Sprite. Again, we never see the king or queen, so we'll just assume she's a responsibility ducking whore. I was in the land of blue, blue twilight, where the nectar is always sweet, happy and free. And then, from a land far away, an insect army, when their evil lord saw me. <laughs> At last, princess, the secret of your magic light will be mine. Yeah, remember this from the history books? Magic light, insect armies, lord swarm. Maybe this is the history of how the Smurfs discovered America, but can we hear the damn story about Christopher Columbus? If the Swan Lord comes back. Nah, I'm not scared of nobody. You're so Come on. Oh. So Pico tries to get her out of the chandelier, which seems like a pretty lame prison as she could fly at any point. What's but some other bugs see her and try to stop her from escaping. <laughs> Wow. Laziest fight scene ever. They're just holding her, and he starts laughing. Call James Cameron. We have a contender for best action scene. <gasps> it's the Swarm Lord. Quick, come on, run. The Quick. princess is mine. You will be my prisoner Marilyn. my kingdom in the West. So the Swarm Lord takes her back to his land, which begs the question, why did he bring her there to begin with? And Pico vows to find her. I'll find you. All the way across the ocean. And you'll never guess where the Swarm Lord's land happens to be. That's right, America! What are the odds? So while Columbus happens to be getting ready to go to America, Pico is... asleep? 
Oh, yeah. I'll find you, Marilyn, all the way across the ocean, right after a teeny-weeny little power nap. Don't want to be groggy! Columbus! Wait, don't leave me! So as the ship sets sail, Columbus suddenly realizes he forgot something. How could I forget about Pico? Hmm? Pico? Sure, my little woodworm <gasps> friend. Woodworm? He's the one who told me the world was around. Well, Pico manages to get a ride on a bird and ends up climbing aboard. I thought that maybe you got left behind. Well, I met this beautiful girl, sir. I really like her a lot, but she was taken away by the evil swarm of his kingdom in the west. But we go to the west to get to the east, so we can look for your love, my little one. I love how so accepting he is that there's just a swarm lord that kidnaps a princess and they're gonna go find him now. But hey, if I was talking to a woodworm with the voice of Donatello from the Teenage Mutant fucking Ninja Turtles, I guess I believe anything too. Well, what's he doing? He's talking to his little worm. Good night, everybody. Now, now, he, he's kissing the little world. Ugh, the stuff they're getting away with on kids' shows these days. So while the crew thinks he's crazy, I can't imagine why, Columbus has a relatively pointless dream about finding the new world. The great Christopher Columbus, hero, explorer, genius... Whoa! Wait a minute! What the hell? Did he just pull that spyglass out of his gonads? He did! He just pulled that spyglass out of his nuts! Don't they have any shame? <laughs> it's only for a second, but it's just so troublingly confusing. I mean, what the hell do you call that? The Wonder Boner. My wife would like that. Okay, okay, just forget I mentioned it! So as if this movie couldn't possibly be any more batshit crazy, we get this insane dream sequence. It's sort of like watching pink elephants from Dumbo while someone was, oh, I don't know, pulling a spyglass out of your dick. Oh, right. oh, wait. I saw you ever fall off. This must be a dream. <laughs> What'll I do? What'll I do? What an unusual view. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, it was a dream. So, after that incredibly important scene, we cut to the next night. Where it seems like the crew still thinks Columbus is crazy, simply because he talks to a woodworm and says a firefly princess needs rescuing, and they try to do him in. But he sings a song on an accordion, and that seems to make everything okay. Well, I guess this is a clear sign that their captain isn't totally insane. Me, I think he's about as valid as Captain fucking Kangaroo. But hey, different strokes, different folks. So because we see how much depth and texture the last dream sequence gave, they give one to Pico as well. And is it me, or is most of the dubbing in this movie very similar to a Popeye cartoon? <gasps> oh, it's Marilyn! How nice of you to visit me in a dream. This is great. Orbiting above the earth with the girl of my dreams. <laughs> yeah, just gonna be picking me some flowers, giving them the flowers, and uh, picking the petals here, and uh, you know, the pretty lady, and those girls I really like dreaming because I can fly! Oh! <laughs> well, maybe I can't fly. My hand! You know, it's not even really dialogue anymore. It's just naming things that they see. Fly! Hi! Don't be oh scared. my gosh! Whoa! I love kisses! Whoa! Oh. Space! Oh! Trees! Oh! Box oh. office sodomy! Oh! oh. I'm learning so much about oh. my character through this! Oh. I'm a tool! But once again, the crew gets fed up with waiting for dry land, and they try to hang. I'm going to give each and every one of you a raise. Oh, I'm on my way. Here's some more kid-friendly imagery, folks. We got characters being hanged and penis-friendly spyglasses. You know, for kids. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? They just happened to hit dry land while Columbus was hanging. So it seems they finally reached America, and <sighs> what the hell? Share the secret of your magic light. Of course! We all remember 
the giant Aztec temple in America that was run by the Swarm Lord who kidnapped the Princess of Blue Twilight so he can figure out the power of her magic light? It's just common knowledge! Shoot me! Fucking shoot me! So they meet up with a talking beaver. Okay! Who shows them the way to the temple. Columbus wants to go there so he can bring back gold and diamonds to his queen. But I don't know if that temple has any gold or diamonds. No! No! The diamonds are here! So it turns out Marilyn is in the temple on top of a large honeycomb. Odd, as we've never seen any bees in this swarm. And they try to defeat the bad guy and rescue her. And now, Mr. Puppet, will you get the gold? Okay, okay. I get to the ball, yes, sir. Wow! I can't even touch that scene. He had a hand puppet, it caught fire. What would you say? Come on, Marilyn, we're out of here! Okay. <laughs> yeah, what about a fool? <laughs> hey, come on! <laughs> But why didn't she go with him at first? He said, come on, and she just sort of stood there. What, was she too busy giggling? Time is of the essence, bitch! Come on, lady, this place is gonna blow! <laughs> so the beaver eats through the honeycomb. That almost sounds like an innuendo, but I'm not clever enough. And the whole temple somehow comes crackling down because of that. So Pico and Marilyn get back together, and we see the natives of this land. Oh, this ought to be rich. You who stolen our idol, destroyed our sacred temple, yes, but, uh, and you've made squishy with the swarm. How can we ever oh, thank you? Yeah. That's right. The Native Americans were honoring the Swarm Lord all this time and made a giant Aztec temple to honor him. What? Did you think they lived in teepees or something? Pfft, you're a fucking dumbass. You've made squishy with the swarm. How can we ever oh. thank you? The lab. Hand it over. We not only discovered the new world, but you were right. The world, she's around. Just think, Pico. Because of you and me, one day there's going to be a big, big city right here. And there's going to be a lot of people. Tall buildings. Maybe they're going to name something after us. Who knows? <laughs> Columbus Circle sounds good to me. Oh, and don't forget about the dislaughtering. Lots and lots of the dislaughtering. Don't look up for the G rating in the next one, folks. He's gonna be a bloodbath. So that was... AWFUL! What else can you really say about it? The dubbing sounds like it was done in one go. The history is beyond insulting. The characters are horseshit. Even the animation is inconsistent. Sometimes it almost looks like something from Disney, but then other times it looks like a half-ass Saturday morning cartoon. And of course, it never fucking shuts up. All I gotta say, Germany, is that if this is what you think American history was like, Bugs Bunny was more authentic than you! And what's you up, Badonks? Indeed, Germany, what the fuck is up? I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and... Read a book. The life to see is a life for me. No love is a land of me. La 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 Oh, the life of the sea is the life for me. No love is a land of me. We love it despite it, delighted to fight it. What other life could they be? That's right. Boing, <laughs>